guys, what is up? Steven here doing a, another film room for the new Chargers offensive lineman, Matt Filer. I know it's been a little bit since I've done one of these. Uh, frankly, I needed a break after the draft and, and watching so much film on draft prospects. Uh, but I'm really excited to bring you this summer series of film breakdowns, diving into you know the various players the Chargers have brought in, some uh, of the other ones that they have already been on the Chargers, and, and potentially... Uh, if I have enough time, br do, breaking down some of the key principles of the New Orleans slash San Francisco offenses, which I think will be obviously very relevant because of who the Chargers have hired. Um, so really excited about all of that. And uh, like I said today, talking about Matt Filer, the new Steelers guard. Before I get started, I do want to shout out everybody who has supported the show. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment to on all of our videos we do we appreciate all of that engagement and make sure you have those notifications on as well on youtube so that being said let's dive in to this matt filer film let me pull it up really fast somebody that i think is going to bring a lot of good things to the chargers somebody that i think it is going to help them quite a bit frankly because the chargers interior offensive line has has been pretty miserable over the last few years so in all the videos, he is lined up to the left of Marquise Pouncey. He is number 71. And I want to start with a few things that I think he does well. I'm going to start first with his run blocking ability, then transition into his pass blocking ability. I think the three things you're getting in Matt Filer above everything else, I think he's a very solid player all around. I think he is somebody who's going to be a average to above average player, which I know that's probably not a glowing response, but he's just a very solid player. And that's really what the Chargers needed after all the years of cycling through guys like Michael Schofield and Ryan Groy and Dan Feeney and Forrest Lamp. Matt Filer is an upgrade. I don't think he's ever going to be an elite player for the Chargers, but he is an upgrade and he's going to bring a very solid presence to the team. So that being said, I think the three things that he does best are first and foremost, he is a very good helper. By what I mean that by that, he looks for work in pass protection situations, which we'll get into in a little bit. That's something that I think, you know, Forrest Lamp was okay at that, but that's not something Dan Feeney would do. That's not something uh, Ryan Groy would do. Even Trey Turner was not very good at that. So Matt Filer knows that he has a chip on his shoulder. He has to work extra hard, twice as hard to earn his respect as a former undrafted free agent. And now that he has his contract, I think he's going to be continuing to have that chip on his shoulder. But he's someone that is going to constantly look for work and try to help out his teammates. And that's something I think stands out really well. The second thing is that he is an outstanding puller. As somebody that you can use to get out in space, kick out an edge rusher, get to the second level and climb and make second blocks. He's second level blocks, excuse me. Uh, he is outstanding in that regard as well. The third thing I think he brings is that he really executes run blocks, specifically reach blocks at a very high level. So we're going to get into all of that uh, and touch on a little bit him as a pass blocker as well. But I wanted to start with his ability as a puller. So here he is again to the left. He's going to pull and kick out number 44. Just root him out. Looks like a very simple block. It's not <laughs> as somebody who has tried to pull and root out defensive ends. It is not simple although Matt Filer does make it look very easy on this particular play. So I love, as a former offensive lineman, I love the fact that Matt Filer runs through contact here. You know, when you're pulling out on the edge, a lot of inferior players, somebody who is not going to have that constant motor, they're going to look to brace for contact first, and Matt Filer does not do that. He runs through the contact, which is textbook technique, and it shows his energy, his effort, and he knows his role. If you turn on the Pittsburgh Steelers tape, Matt Filer is always the player that they use to pull. They didn't really pull Kevin Dotson very much, David DeCastro. It was always Matt Filer. So to me, you know, that shows that Sean, Sean Surratt, who the Chargers did bring over from Pittsburgh, he's going to know that Matt Filer has this kind of attribute in him, which I love. I'm really excited to see that because... And frankly, the Chargers did not pull very many, pull their into your offensive linemen very frequently. They used it a little bit with Mike Pouncey, but not really ever with the guards. So here he is again, running through contact, simple, but very, very effective, high-level play by Matt Filer. 
The next one here against the Philadelphia Eagles. So I watched these three games against the Giants, the Eagles, and the Ravens. Those were um, his, you know, his best game statistically uh, was against the Ravens. I happen to think it was the Giants. Um, and then one of his worst games was against the Philadelphia Eagles. So I wanted to go back there and kind of see what it was. Um, but I'm going to mention a few plays here as well. So again, line up to the left of Marquise Pouncey. Um, if you can see him, he's right next to Alejandro Villanueva. And he's going to pull out and he's going to, this time, he's going to block. I think this is Jalen Mills, if I'm not mistaken. Alex, if you're watching, please correct me. Um, but when you pull out onto the edge, in, out onto the perimeter as an offensive lineman, it's very difficult to block a defensive back, right? They obviously have the athleticism, athleticism advantage. You know, theoretically, this person should be able to get around Matt Filer and, and you know, make him look silly. Um, but Matt Filer does a great job here as well. Getting out to the perimeter and then making this second level block, getting a chip, getting a second shot on him, just a really effective, you know, use of his mobility and athleticism as well. So I think that's something that's a little underrated for him and frankly for all offensive linemen, if we're being honest. <laughs> but I'm an offensive line guy. So uh, that's just my thoughts right there. But this is just a really effective play, shows his athleticism. And again, frees up that space for Benny Snell to get to the second level. If this tight end here, I think that's Vance McDonald, had done a better job here than Benny Snell's one-on-one -on -one with that safety. So as a coach, you take those one-on-one -on -one chances with your guys any anytime you get. So again, just a fantastic job by Matt Filer here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, next one. Last clip of him pulling, I think. Uh, again, he's going to root out a defensive end on this particular play and just running through contact. Something that is so simple, but springs. Look at this space now that Benny Snell has right here because of Matt Filer kicking out his guy, doing his job effectively, and really just making his presence known. Again, this seems like a very simple play, but he runs through the contact, tries to box him out. Um, just a really effective yet simple play, and then gives Benny Snell the room that he needs to get the first down. All right, as a run blocker, I mentioned this, but he executes reach blocks very well. What, what a reach block is, essentially, um, you're reaching to the next gap over, and you're either trying to turn your hips and seal him off, seal the edge. That's more of a tackle thing, more of a center thing. As a guard in this kind of situation, frankly, you're just trying to get this defensive tackle out of the spot. So, you know, he's going to reach to his left. He's going to try and just frankly take that guy to the sideline. So that's what he's going to do. try and do here uh, against Dexter Lawrence, who is no scrub. He is a very good player. And I really like the way that he fires off the ball, right? You know, his leverage stays sound, and he really gets there in a hurry, latches on as fast as possible, and then he's able to use his hands, use his leg drive, and finish this block. Look at him just climb the ladder there using his legs, using his effort. Really fantastic job. All right, one more time for you guys here. Again, just, you know, you want you want to talk about what a guard is supposed to do. He's supposed to create angles. You know, this gives the back, I think this is Snell again, gives him the opportunity to either go left, go right. He ends up going right and runs right into the linebacker. Kind of wish he would have followed Matt Filer there, but it's okay. You know, great job by Filer overall. Great effort, great technique. All right, this particular play. So PFF uh, graded him really poorly against this game, against the Eagles in this game, excuse me. Um, and one of the things that they graded him really poorly was his run blocking. Um, and he did struggle a little bit against, um, Alex told me his name earlier, Vernon Hargrave. <laughs> um and Malik Jackson gave him a little bit of trouble too. So I do kind of agree. I mean, I only watched four games of the four. This was his worst game. But I do think that if you watch enough offensive line play, you'll see that there are good things about every single game. And that's kind of my – that's as a former offensive lineman, that's my biggest thing with PFF is that it's like this player messed up. You know, we have to give him a low grade. And that's, that's not really how you should look at offensive line play, in my opinion, because you're on the field for all 60, 65, 70 snaps, whatever – so, of course, you're going to mess up on a couple plays a game, right? And so I, I do think that Matt Filer did have a very solid game against the Eagles. It's just that, you know, PFF, just that's just the way that they grade offensive linemen, which I disagree with. That being said, 
he did he did show some really good things here and again against malik jackson this is not really a reach block this is just straight up uh man on man and you're gonna have to try and root this player out you know kind of power football here and look at that leg drive that he ends up creating you know it looks like kind of a stalemate at first malik jackson very solid player very underrated defensive tackle in my opinion has some juice has some power to him and you look at matt filer the way he fires off the ball right here gets his hands on early and you can see malik jackson's hands are up high so to me that shows good technique because Matt Filer has fired off and has the defensive tackle's hands up high, right? Because there's a defensive tackle, offensive tackle, whatever your the case may be. You know, you're trying to get your hands on the opposing player's chest. You're trying to be able to control them. So seeing Jackson's hands that up high to me shows that Matt Filer's punch is strong and it is effective and it is quick. And then once he's able to set. You know, he's really able to root Malik Jackson out of his spot just with his shirt, with his sheer technique. And then he ends up pushing him five yards down the field the other way. Now, obviously, depending on who you ask, you know, some people will look at somebody scraping and pushing someone down the line and say, well, that's not really an effective block. He's not getting pushed down the line. But look at this angle that Matt Filer creates for his running back. You know, he's able to do his job at an effective pace, at an effective rate of strength oops went a little too far there and so again he withstands this initial punch by malik jackson and then is able to wash him down four or five yards down the field and look at this lane that he gives james connor as a coach i'll take that anytime if i can get my running back this kind of lane you know on any given play i will take that bet and i will assume that my running back can make something happen here. Obviously, the Pittsburgh Steelers do not have that kind of back. But with the Chargers, right, they have Austin Eckler. You give Austin Eckler this much space, it's much more space than he had last year, right? And so, you know, I'll take this kind of play from Matt Filer all day, every day. And it does end up being a big play for James Conner. But on a consistent basis, he just wasn't he wasn't there. All right, so again, um, highlighting back to the Ravens play, the Ravens defensive tackle group, is absurdly big like they're all like 330 340 and so on paper right you would think that they would have the kind of advantage that would give a guy like matt filer a little bit of a little bit of pause but it was not the case matt filer had himself a day this was the wednesday game this was the COVID game for those that are curious here um sorry my dog's here making a little being a little poo head <laughs> um anyway so matt filer here he's gonna root out this defensive tackle this nose tackle not an easy block, right? I know he has help initially, but just look at this leg drive that Matt Filer finishes the, this block with. Does a fantastic job of rooting this defensive tackle out. Again, apologies for my dog here. All right, well, let's get back to this. Sorry about that again. But just a great job rooting this defensive tackle out. And then, you know, this other play here that I'm going to highlight here, he's just a really strong and solid run blocker from what I have seen. And I know that when the Chargers initially signed him, some of the Steelers fans were like, well, he's not that good against the run. I feel like Matt Filer was the best run blocker on this offensive line last season. I really do. Again, I only watched four games. I didn't watch every single game. But I, I feel like Matt Filer is a very, very solid run blocker. You see him here get up to the second level against the, the running back. Or the running back, excuse me, the linebacker. So he's going to block number 45 here to the left. And this is a really hard block because you are you know you have three like two, three yards of space in between you and this linebacker. And that's a tough block in, its, in and of itself because, again, the athletic advantage would you know seemingly go towards the linebacker. But he does a great job here being patient to get off of his stance. And then he's, once he's able to latch on, he uses his strength and his core his core strength to get this get this person, you know, five, six yards off the ball. The play is designed to go to the left. For whatever reason, Benny Snell cut it back to the right and it ended up being a loss. But, you know, if he had gone left, then that would have been an effective play is what it is. All right, so... Now I want to talk about Matt Filer as a pass blocker. I mentioned this earlier. This is the play that I tweeted out. <laughs> Just an absurd play from someone who is looking for work. And 
Yeah, I wish I could have found better plays against the Giants and the Steelers in this kind of regard in showing this kind of skill set. Um, but Matt Filer against the Giants really had himself a day, and he's going to help Marquise Pouncey out here. Marquise Pouncey just gets obliterated off the line by Leonard Williams. That's a hell of a bull rush. That is one hell of a bull rush. And when you can take your start, the other starting center and stand him up like that with that kind of posture, that is a hell of a bull rush. And Matt Filer sees this, and he's going to go and help out. Gets an initial punch. Marquise Pouncey is falling on his butt, falling on his face. And then Matt Filer is just going to say, you know what, Leonard Williams? You sit down. I don't want you touching my guy. You sit down. I love this play so much from Matt Filer. And the next play I'm going to show after this and the one after that, <laughs> they're no slouch either. But just this, this kind of play, it really shows his personality, in my opinion, as somebody that is really – intelligent and aware of his surroundings and he knows what's going on. So to me, this shows the ability to recognize where the mismatch is on the offensive line. He knows that Leonard Williams is the most talented player on this defensive line for the giants. And then he's going to make sure that 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 guy gets the attention he deserves. You know, once he sees that this linebacker backs out and is covering Vance McDonald, he's going to go and hit Leonard Williams. Doesn't get him the first time gets in the second time and just boom, Lays the wood. Love it. Love it. All right, next one here. I think he's going to get Leonard Williams again. No, I'm sorry. He's going to get this number 44. So he's looking down this line. Very Quentin Nelson-esque, if you guys remember when Nelson lit up the Chargers and specifically Melvin Ingram. Um, but you see this outside linebacker out to the right. He's going to loop around towards the middle. And Matt Filer's eyeing him the whole time looking that way. And then he's going to let him know. He's like, you don't come back to the middle. You stay outside. I love it. I love it. So he knows. He knows. Times it perfectly. Uh, you can't see it super well. That is unfortunate because of the camera. Um, but you, <laughs> he just lays this this sucker out. Like, look at that guy. Now you see me. Now you don't. Love it. All right. Last one here. This is another one that I tweeted out. Just really shows the awareness here. Because he's going to step inside, look inside, and then he's like, all right, this is Marquise Pouncey on a linebacker. I'm going to trust him to do his thing. I'm going to go help Alejandro Villanueva, who was trash in this game, uh, against Leonard Williams, who is was amazing in this game. So, again, showing his awareness, showing his flexibility, showing the ability to adjust on the fly to what the defense is doing to him and his teammates. That's not something that the Chargers had last year. It just wasn't. You know, the Patriots destroyed the Chargers offensive line with simple stunts because they just they didn't have the mental capacity and awareness to handle these kind of things. You know, and I've said this on the podcast before, but Matt Filer, Ode Abushi, Corey Lindsay, Rashawn Slater, all these players have that trait in common, just really smart and aware players who are capable of adjusting on the fly and helping their teammates. So this is just a, a great play. Again, it's a simple play. You know, he's not getting someone on the ground like the previous two, but these plays add up. They help your offensive line come together because as a left tackle in this situation, if you know that Matt Filer has your back on every play, that's going to allow you to play with more confidence. It's going to allow you to play more free. It's going to allow you to take some chances, be aggressive. You know, Rashawn Slater, I think he's a very physical player. He's a little limited with his length. But he, having that ability to have Matt Filer next to him, knowing that he, meaning Matt Filer, will have his back on every single play, it's going to do wonders for Matt Filer, or for Rashawn Slater, excuse me, because Slater's going to be able to take all these chances, be aggressive, and be himself because he knows that Matt Filer is going to be there. So, again, simple kind of play. But Alejandro Villanueva is beat right now. Leonard Williams has the inside lane right now. That means Villanueva is beat. In the NFL, this is getting beat. Matt Filer comes over and he closes this off, gives Big Ben just enough time to get this ball off because, I mean, maybe he gets this pass off regardless, right? But if Matt Filer doesn't come over in time, maybe Leonard Williams hits him as he throws. Maybe it ends up as an interception. You never really know. 
But in the NFL, just that just that little bit from Leonard Williams means that Villanueva is beat. Matt Filer shut that down really quickly. So just love that play. Oh, this finished by James Washington, too, by the way. Great job. All right, so I had to get the outside angle here because the uh, the backside angle was not great. Um, but this is the last one I'll show, again, as the left guard here. He's going to help out, absorb the contact. So he passes this off to the center. I think this was not Marquise Pouncey. I think this was someone else. Um, and then he's going to look to the left tackle. And then he's going to come back to the right, to the center, and lay the wood on this defensive tackle. You can't really see. I apologize. <laughs> but, you know, you can see Matt Filer with his arms out. You can see that he punched this guy to the ground. I just wanted to show that. Again, just his flex. Ability, his ability to adapt on the fly, so impressive from the uh, the former undrafted free agent. All right, so I am going to say now at this point that I think in one on one situations, I think Matt Filer's weakest attribute is his pass blocking ability. And again, I do think he's a very solid player across the board, but I'm, I've got to be honest with you guys. Like this, this is part of the business, right? Like he is somewhat susceptible in passing situations one-on-one. -on -one. Not to the point where he's going to give up 37 pressures like Dan Feeney or Forrest Lamp, right? But just to prepare you guys, like I'm not trying to, you know, raise the bar for unrealistic ex expectations. Matt Filer is a little susceptible against, you know, dominant pass rushing defensive tackles. However, he does also show the ability to win on a frequent basis as well. So again, this is kind of the offensive line play in me. He's going to win some, but he's also going to lose some. Again, he's not going to be a, a, a consistent, dominant left guard from snap, from start to finish of the game. But he is going to be an effective, solid player, and he does have the attributes to be effective. Here he's going to take on a Leonard Williams bull rush. Not an easy task, but he handles it well. Again, he's going to be able to win some reps from time to time and most of the game. But again, you know, sometimes, you know, Malik Jackson gave him a little problem. So did Vernon Hargrave. And of course, Fletcher Cox said it well. He, he did kind of struggle against the Eagles. But he does show the capacity to handle that, uh, that kind of um, adversity and bounce back. So just wanted to highlight here, make sure that, you know, I wasn't really raising the bar. I'm not expecting an elite player here, but he is still very solid. Last one here, he'll show the ability to recover. And that's part of what comes with you know, offensive line plays specifically as a guard, you're going to get beat. You're going to lose that, that step, lose that edge from time to time, but you've got to be able to recover and close gaps. And that's what Matt Filer does here. Loses initially, but then he recovers, removes his hands, brings them back, and then is able to give his quarterback enough time to make this throw. So we'll go back and watch that one more time. Um, I think this is Hargrave, if I'm not mistaken. It might be Malik Jackson. But he's going to try a two-hand punch, right? And whoever this defensive tackle is, I guess, I'm pretty sure it's Hargrave. You know, he's able to rip and slap his hands down, get Filer leaning forward a little bit, and then Filer is able to recover here in a really nice way, right? Because this is a similar thing. Initially, he loses this battle. But he's able to recover, plant his feet, and then drive this defensive tackle behind and give Big Ben enough time to throw. So, again, very solid player across the board. Someone that I am very excited about, frankly, just because he is an above-average player, in my opinion, and somebody that I think Chargers fans should be excited about as well. So, that's going to do it for my Matt Filer breakdown, about 25 minutes. Make sure you guys let me know what you think. If you learned anything, make sure and comment in the, in the comments below. Again. All of these breakdowns go on Patreon exclusively for 24 hours, and then we post them publicly on YouTube. So if you want exclusive access to these breakdowns, make sure and check us out on Patreon. The link to that is going to be in the description below. And as always, bolt up.